Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome to another developer Q&A video for Eve Echoes. For those of you already familiar with this format, I will put a timestamp on screen now so you can skip ahead to the meat of the video. For those of you who want to learn what a dev Q&A is about or how you can win one of three combo Omega months every single week, stick around. Now, the developer Q&A is a series every single week where the developers take a series of questions posed by you, the community, they answer those questions, then post the responses to the official Eve Echoes Facebook page, Twitter account, Discord, and it is in-game as well. If you open up your shipboard AI, you can go to Q&A from there and view them there. Now, each week, I like to go through the questions and the answers, adding my own input on top. Now, this is not just based on my opinion, but rather years of games development alongside various different development teams. I've been working in games development pretty much since I was about 18, 19 years old. Um, and obviously, I spend a lot of time with these developers as well, going over the dev Q&As, the Discord AMAs, the roundtables, all these kind of things to collate and collect all of this information together, hopefully to add some additional insight on the dev Q&A. I know some folks do just like to read it themselves, but ultimately I find a lot of folks on like the official Discord, for example, are then saying, well, this doesn't make sense. And it's like, well, yes, in isolation it doesn't, but if you compare it to the other stuff they've said, it gives us a better viewpoint. Now, in regards to winning a month of Combo Omega or Basic Omega, if you have a question for the developers, if you post it to the developers by clicking the link down in the description of this video, it'll take you through to a Google document. You can type in your question there. If your question is one that is chosen to be responded to, you will earn a month of Basic Omega. And every single week, I give three people following me a month of Combo Omega. Two of those are usually given to someone in my Discord, so make sure you're joining the Discord and talking in the chat there, and one of them is given to someone in my YouTube comment section. Anyway, all that said and done then, please hit like on the video. Let's jump right into the developer Q&A for the 26th of July through to the 1st of August. I do also apologize for the slightly croaky vo uh, voice this morning. <clears throat> Question number one, have you considered having the ITC tax rate set on a sliding scale against system security level to try to encourage trading outside of Jita? If less security is provided, surely your taxes should be lower. Yes. This I agree with. Not necessarily that it has to be a sliding scale based on the um, like the security level, but definitely there needs to be a reason to go to other ITCs. We've discussed this before. The basic thing here is that if everyone is just posting at Jita, it becomes one hyper-competitive market that drives prices down. Now, that may be good for the consumer, but that means that for industrialists or for traders, this is a very difficult game. <clears throat> It's hard to make profit if you are constantly being pushed towards the lowest po uh, price points, right? So the idea here is that, <clears throat> excuse me, if you were to spread out to other interstellar trading centers, then you would have more competition and thus prices can be variable between them. Now, I've suggested before that perhaps the ITCs should have lower taxes on specific items. For instance, Pater and uh, Istodard being in Minmatar space should have lower taxes on any of the stuff that drops in Minmatar space, but higher taxes on stuff that ultimately you'd have to import, or maybe even vice versa. It could even be that the stuff that you sell in Pater, if it's Minmatar, has slightly higher taxes, whereas if it's non-Minmatar, it has considerably lower taxes. And I don't honestly know what the correct answer is here, but something needs to be done, because right now there is no reason whatsoever to ever put anything for sale outside of Jita. And the response from Kylum here is less than encouraging. Thank you for your feedback. During certain events, we reduce the tax rate at the Amar System Trading Center to encourage everyone to trade there. So whoop de do at a very best situation of the however many ITCs there are, 20? Ultimately, two of them are going to see use because netties don't want to take some rather simple steps to help people spread out to different ITCs and actually generate a, you know, a, a proper trading market in Evecos. It's disappointing at this point. It really is that we're two years in and we're still all trading at Jita. Like at this point, you may as well just remove the other ITCs because yeah, one or two people might use them. Like honestly, when I'm exploring, if I really need to pick up something, I will often get it shipped to a nearby ITC. I had some stuff sent to Berai before and um, that kind of thing. But 
the fact is that something needs to be done and the developers still don't seem to be willing to engage with this system which is really disappointing if I'm being completely honest two years into the game. I think there are multiple different ways you could do this. I've talked about them in other videos, I've briefly mentioned them here but let's move on then to question number two and hopefully my voice will hold for this one. Now that tier 4 rigs have been introduced and are done by reverse engineering, is it possible to introduce the same with higher tier drones, as in reverse engineer them using lower tier blueprints plus data items? That's also an interesting concept, let's listen to Kylem's response first and then I'll come back to this one. Thank you for your feedback, but at present drones have their own corresponding blueprints and there's no plans to make adjustments to it. That's not really what was being asked here. Now look, I think the fact that the various different uh, like Navy issue and Federation issue drones and all that um, are exclusive to Faction War Games does give Faction War Games players something to work towards. That said, yeah, they're really quite expensive and not, every, not many people do Faction War Games these days, so those prices just kind of go up. I don't know. I do like the concept of, for example, using older drones to reverse engineer new ones. And I would love to see that if they eventually do add, say, C-type drones, or even just the meta level 8, like the green level drones, that ultimately you would reverse engineer the blueprint from that by consuming the meta 6 drones. So if you want to make, for example, I don't know what they would call it, but the meta level 8 version of a warrior, you need to use a Republic Fleet warrior um, to reverse engineer the blueprint. Rather than using wreckage, you use the actual drone um, and then some other stuff to reverse engineer a blueprint that you could then build from there. I think that would be a really interesting way of doing some additional consumption. We've talked about this before as well, um, but someone did suggest to me once, and I still really like the idea, that say, for example, the Bellicose 3 Covert Ops, in order to make that, you would need to have a Bellicose 2 Covert Ops consumed in the process. Whether that's consuming a Bellicose 2 Covert Ops in the reverse engineering of the blueprint for the Bellicose 3 Covert Ops, or whether want the blueprint for the Bellicose 3 Covert Ops requires a Bellicose 2 Covert Ops to be consumed in the manufacturing process, like you're upgrading the ship, basically. And then the Bellicose 2 Covert Ops requires a Bellicose Covert Ops, and the Bellicose Covert Ops requires a Bellicose, same as the Bellicose Interdictor would require a Bellicose. Now, this ideally would essentially p drive like people to build some of the smaller ships. That means that people who aren't always building ships, um, and certainly people at lower tech levels who can't build the big expensive ones, still have a market. As a Tech 6 player, you could still be building ruptures to sell to people who want to build them into Rupture Guardians or Rupture Interdictors and things like that. Ultimately, this would need to also be done in like with a rejig of skills for industry, um, getting rid of things like cruiser manufacture and changing it to Minmatar cruiser manufacture in order to promote specialization. And I know what people are going to say there, oh that's just more skills for me to earn. But the point is, if you look at the skills as a checklist that everyone needs to have, then what's the point in even having skills? Like, why have the skill tree? The idea of this kind of stuff is that people should be picking a particular path. When the game first launched, I remember a lot of people like going for, like, would have one person who did Angel Reverse Engineering, and then someone who would do Guristus Reverse Engineering. You'd have the one person who does that particular thing, and it gives them a niche and some compatibility, um, and it means that if you were to split between, say, Minma Mimitar and Guristus, and not even Guristus, Mimitar and Kaldari and stuff like that, then you would find that people don't skill every, sing like every single type of construction. You would find that some people might skill all four cruiser construction skills and be a cruiser manufacturer. You'd find that some people just go for like Minmatar Frigate, Minmatar Destroyer, Minmatar Cruiser, Minmatar Battle Cruiser, and they become Minmatar Constructors. And that, to me, adds a lot more diversity, and it would genuinely assist the situation. Rather than everyone competing against everyone, you have your own niches in the market. So something like this with the drones, I think, could really work. And again, it's slightly disappointing that the answer is just basically, there's no plan to do anything. Not, uh, this is a really cool idea and we like it because of this and we might add it or we don't want to do it because of X, Y or Z. I feel like sometimes that whoever asks, whoever picks the questions and then goes around and asks the team, sometimes just kind of goes, like catches them at the wrong time perhaps. Like maybe when Kylan was answering this, he was like heavily busy with something else and it's just like quick and we need to just throw an answer together for these. And that's 
kind of disappointing because we don't get much communication with the devs. I would like to see the quality of that communication, therefore, improve. Question number three then, can we get the ability to look at things like ship tree when we're in the waiting screen for faction war games as it will give us something to do while we wait on game? Apparently you can actually do this if you sort of hit the back button if you're on an Android phone. Usually you have to swipe down to the top a little bit to get the uh, sort of your back and menu buttons to appear. You tap the back button, it will leave you in the queue, but you do now have access to the screen as if you were docked. And that's cool. And I definitely think that this should be more prominent and there should just be a minimize button. And if you can do it by clicking back rather than the cross, which leaves the queue, surely we should just have a minimize button. How difficult can that be to add, right? Thank you for your feedback, says Kylum again, but our current plan is to optimize the gameplay of Faction War games so we can shorten the waiting time through increased participation. And that's good. That is good. That is ultimately the right way to do things. If you want shorter queue times, like the point here is that someone's saying, I'm bored while in the queue. And the best response to that is not, let's give you something to do while in the queue, but let's shorten that queue so that you're not bored. That is the best response. That said, I do think you can kind of do a half and half here. Adding a minimize button wouldn't be difficult, just so that more people are aware of how to do that. I don't know if you can do it on iOS. Um, I assume you can, but iOS is weird and fidgety with this kind of stuff. On Android, if you just sort of half swipe down from the top and then hit the back button, it will minimize the queue while giving you access to chat and your ship hanger and whatever it is you're doing in station. So. Yeah, I think uh, I think that would be an easy little fix there, but it's nice to see they are still working on Faction War Games. How long has it been since DIR Reflection was taken down without Be Back Soon notice? I don't know. Anyway, fourth and final question then. Let's move on. As a part-time industry player, I dabble in rig manufacturing. I don't build ships as I'm not a full-time indie guy, but I make and sell rigs for my exploration and end space content. Yeah, so do I. This is pretty much my playstyle right now. I feel it's a little unnecessary to have to waste skill points skilling into ship manufacturing just to get manufacturing slots available. Yeah, this has irked me since the very beginning of the game. Literally, when I when I first started in Benzie, I decided rig manufacturing was something I wanted to do, and then I realised even if I got to Expert 5, I would still only have two manufacturing slots, and that sucks. It means I would have to train frigate manufacturing to get two quick skills, and yeah, frigate manufacturing's cheap. But why do I need to skill into something I don't want to do in order to be able to do the thing that I do want to do? Like, imagine, for example, that you had to train into Amar lasers. You had to train into, say, small laser operation in order to use mining lasers. That's kind of the point we're getting at here. And it's not quite as aggressive as that. I get, I get it. It's still manufacturing. But why do you have to train into ship manufacturing if you want to just be rig or module manufacturing. That's That really does suck. Ultimately, let's move on though. I feel it's a little unnecessary to have to waste skill points skilling into ship manufacturing just to get manufacturing slots available. The same goes for reverse engineering of blueprints. The slots shouldn't be tied to skills some players don't use. Instead, can, I was going to say this, can we just skill into the particular skill we want and receive slot options for expert skills in each individual skill? Okay, that's not what I was going to say. Open to suggestions on this or any ideas the devs or community may have to change this. Thank you. My honest suggestion would, to this would be get rid of all of the slots from any of the skills. Don't give have frigate manufacturing give you slots. Don't have rig manufacturing give you slots. Don't have any of the manufacturing give you slots. Have like an industrial processes skill that then gives you the slots. Like in EVE Online, you have a skill. I'm trying to remember exactly which one it is. You've got some someone's like supply chain management, which allows you to uh, like do stuff from a station when you're not at that station. Like you train that skill so that you can be further away from the industry center that you're using. You can move the blueprints and do crafting and that while docked at other stations. That, I'm sure there's one like that that does give you more jobs that you can do. And just that, just add an industrial process skill that it, that's the one that gives you the more slots. If you train that all the way up to Expert 5, you unlock all of the slots and maybe some minor bonuses across the board and then have reverse engineering processes do the same on the other side. It's just a skill that opens up those slots, not tied to any individual manufacturer. To me, 
that would be a good way of doing things because then everyone gets to specialize into the manufacturing they want and can choose to skill up that skill as high as they like in order to get those slots. If you decide you only need four slots, then you stop training industrial processes. If you decide you need all of them, you take it all the way to expert five. Oh look, player choice. So what do the devs suggest? Kylam, thank you for your feedback, but there is no adjustment plan for the time being. We hope that everyone has their own expertise. We co cooperate and change needed items through trading. Yes, that's not answering the question though, Kylam. He's asked, can we get more slots? Because I'm a rig manufacturer and the game caps me at two slots unless I decide to go and build, train ship manufacturing, a skill that I will never use other than for the slots that it gives. And you're saying we hope people cooperate. How do people cooperate and trade additional manufacturing slots? That's not what the question here is asking. And I get that there's a language barrier on these things, but this whole dev Q&A today really does feel like just whoever asked the questions caught Kylum at a really bad time. Kylum's a cool guy. He's got a lot of interesting things to say. So when it's this short and clipped every time, it's literally like he was being bothered right in the middle of designing a brand new system and just needed to shoo the person away. And that's disappointing. That's so disappointing. Anyway, folks, these have been my thoughts and opinions. What do you think on this? Do you think we should rejig our industry skills to have something that just gives the slot options? Or do you think that we should perhaps try another way of doing it? Have you got other ideas of how that could work? How do you th feel about the previous questions when my phone lets me swipe backwards? About ITCs, have you got an idea for how to promote people to use other ITCs? What about tier four rigs? Do you think we should be able to reprocess drones? like that as well and have higher tier drones and what do you think about like the ship tree and waiting screen things for faction war games um there's not all that much to go on in this week's dev q and I'll be completely frank, but there we go. That is just how it is sometimes. Hopefully what we've got does give a little bit of insight into what's going on in the development team. It really doesn't this week, does it? I don't know. I don't know. It's been a rough week. Anyway, folks, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Otherwise, happy sailing and see you in New Eden.